Greetings, friendos, and welcome back to the Ox Slayer for yet another video. For today's topic, I thought we would cap off this year's Oxtoberfest in April, the first of its kind, by taking a look at a long-forgotten toy line from the early 1990s. So without further ado, here we go. Slammers, ultra-flex dudes who make off-the-wall moves, was a line of figures released by Mattel in the year 1990. In total, there were eight figures to collect, and each were given a brief biography on the back of their packaging, and the information for these figures went like this. Ding Dang, personal quote, Mondo Slam Man, Stunt Specialty, ding -a -doop. Favorite scoffing grub, aka food, cattle corpse stew. Ding Dang's so smooth he can rip a pipe and shoot the breeze at the same time. When one of his Ollie to Impossible stunts falls flat, he just bounces back on his board and says, You gotta slam if you're gonna jam. Nash. Personal quote, skater's rule. Stunt specialty, anti-grav invert. Favorite scoffing grub, Rock'em Tacos. He's a totally ripped, ragged, and damaged board route, a street skater with gnarly downward moves. The way he wails on downhills and bends gravity around tubes makes you wonder whether his think tank is a few gallons short, but that's just a warm-up for him. Jive Guy. Personal quote, Off the wall, man. Stunt specialty, Axle Grind. Favorite scoffing grub, nuked nachos. He's so cool that icebergs wear sweaters around him. His board is spit sharp and his moves are classic. All the slammers take his word about what's in and what's grim. He's a legendary ripper with a notorious reputation for axle grinding. Lip slide. Personal quote, born to skate. Stunt specialty, Lip slide, of course. Favorite scoffing grub, bonsai burgers. A mellow, laid-back, tube-grooving kind of guy who doesn't get serious about anything until his high tops hit a deck. Then he becomes a lip sliding stunt-stoked thrash master in search of a pool to pummel. Ollie grab. Personal quote, tubular man. Stunt specialty, ollie grab. Again, of course. Favorite scoffing grub? Scruff puppies. He can ollie over anything in his path. Ollie grabs the off-the-wall deck shaper bent on building the ultimate airboard to launch off big verts. All the slammers ride his custom boards made to order for their stunt specialty. Ripster. Personal quote, crank it. Stunt specialty, fully tweaked slalom. Favorite scoffing grub? Slam sandwiches. He's so extreme. He's the fastest dude on a deck. Ripster is always looking for cheap thrills, steep hills, and new ways to bend his board for speed streaking effects. He just can't slow down, and there's no stopping him when he feels the need for speed. Tinhead. Personal quote, Cosmic Man. Stunt specialty, Rim Skimmer. Favorite scoffing grub? Tin roof brownies. His brain box is always buzzing under his antique skid lid. Tin head has an uncanny talent for turning any terrain into a skater's paradise. He'll grind any surface, carve any concave, skim any rim, and launch himself in the wildest freestyle slights imaginable. Zombod. Personal quote? Party on, dudes. Stunt specialty? Spinal Tap. Favorite scoffing grub? Spud Skins. A mysterious ninja in knee pads, a freestyle phantom, a wild thing on wheels who lurks in the dark, forgotten places of the concrete jungle. You never know when or where you'll see him next, but when you do, you can bet he's been boning up on some spine-tingling stunts. These figures combined the concept of the Tech Deck fingerboards with the Evil Knievel dolls of old, only in this case replacing the 1970s stuntman with totally radical mutants and other creatures that were popular at this time 
thanks in no small part to those heroes in the half shell. Another thing these dudes have in common with the Ninja Turtles is the fact that, like the original Mondo Gecko of that particular toy line, each of these figures came packaged with stickers that you could put on the skateboard to customize it. As well as the fact that, in looks at least, Ripster is a ripoff of Master Splinter, and not to mention that Zombot is a freaking ninja for corn's sake. Anyway, there was also the Ramp Grinder stunt set that you could purchase to go along with your figures for added fun and adventures. And when it comes to that set, you would get two ramps to try and jump your figures across. One of the eight figures seemingly chosen at random in the factory, including the accompanying skateboard. And a green plastic scoop with which you would try to launch the figures over the ramps. Another thing of interest that I found whilst doing research for this video is that apparently fingerboarding, aka, you know, skateboarding using your fingers like so with a little mini skateboard, has actually been a thing since the late 1960s. It wasn't until the late 80s that a company decided to make mini skateboards for this purpose, as originally people would just make their own boards at home. Now, according to my research, it seems that a boarder, a skateboarder, by the name of Lance Mountain made this goofy little idea more popular among the boarding community, and from there it spread into the mainstream during the 80s and 90s, and even still to this day. Okay, now that we've gotten all of that out of the way, let's get a look at these totally cool dudes back here, shall we? So, as should be plainly evident, at the present I only have three of these little figures, in the form of Nash, Zombod, and Ding Dang. And something that I didn't notice until literally just now is the fact that Zombod here has a skateboard that looks like an accessory that could have come from a Beetlejuice action figure. I mean, we got the cattle skull over here, we got the black and white stripes, and for some reason at the back of the board we have like a yellow grin or grimace, just like with pointy yellow teeth. I really like that addition. Now, another thing, which I did notice before, but hadn't brought up, is the fact that for some odd reason, each of these little figures has holes in their hands as well as their feet to attach them to the skateboard, so you can enable them to pose in different ways and shapes, just like so. Like, uh-huh. And whoa! Wow, look at that. <laughs> and of course, the ever popular Flamingo, the one leg. Woohoo! Alright, enough of that clowning around. Now, this set of toys only lasted for a short time during the year of 1990. And it's honestly a bit of a shame, as these were the only eight figures that were ever produced, along with their little stunt set, like I mentioned before. And unfortunately, as was the, uh, the usual problem with skateboard-related toys in the late 80s and early 90s, the popularity waned fairly quickly and it never really caught on. But what can you do? And that's part of the reason why, even though these things are so hard to find, most of the time when you do find them, they're still on the original cards, you know, unopened, sealed, NRFB. Now there's not really a whole lot left that I can say about these goofy little things, other than the fact that they're a nice, bright, and colorful set of toys, which I think would set neatly and fit in fairly quaintly, fairly perfectly, with other oddball 80s and 90s toys, of like cool beasts, wicked creatures, and mutants and monsters that you might have at your disposal. They would fit perfectly. They would blend right in. I think, as a matter of fact, hold on, folks. I have just a couple of good examples of what I'm referring to. Because I think, with little to no trouble, that these Slammers dudes would it fit in fairly perfectly on a shelf with, like, say, your Toxic Crusaders. I mean, we got Toxie there, and then we got Doublehead over here, and. With all the bright colors, they fit right in, wouldn't you agree? On that note, I'm going to go ahead and put these guys back on the shelf. 
and once I get back in front of the camera, we'll wrap things up. Because I feel y'all deserve an ending to this particular goofy little video. And on that note, putting our little guests of honor back on the shelf over here, I would just like to end things off by saying thank you all so very much for tuning back in for another video. I do appreciate it deep in my cold little black heart. And with that, I say unto you, my viewers, Viewer beware. Subscribe if you dare. <laughs> They're a nice, bright, colorful set of figures, which I think would work. Work. Okay, now that we've gotten all of that out of the way, let's take a look at our cool little dudes back here, shall we? As you can plainly see, at the present, I only have three of the little dudes. And something that I forgot to mention, forgot to notice, noticed and forgot to mention, noticed and forgot to mention, one little thing that I noticed and forgot to mention, is that I can't get my lines right. Ever. Ever. These characters combined the concept of the tech... I knew what I wanted to do, but I didn't practice it, so I couldn't. These characters combined the concept of the tech deck toys of the 90s with the evil Knievel figures of old, only in this case replacing the 1970s stuntman with totally radical mutants and other uh, strange... I knew that burp was coming, that's why I messed myself up. Thank me, I'm welcome. Later. <laughs> Radical. <laughs> okay, that's enough.